I'm hot and studly. Oh yes. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Gavin Dudley, hot and study. And that is a great thing Hi. to segue into. The yeah, my name is Seymour Studley. Five of the Overclock Podcast. That's O V R C L K D underscore Z A. Gotta change. We gotta change it because it's too confusing for people. Yeah, you, man, we, we want word of mouth marketing. We want to tell your friends, I'll just listen to Overclock. Just you know. share from the Thank podcast. You. Catcher or however you listen to it. No, but you talk, it's word of mouth. You're your talking friends. to people. Like, um, you're telling your friend, I listen to this amazing podcast. It's called... Over uh, but you have to spell it with yeah, the, no the, the vowels, except at the beginning. Ah. And and then there's no K and, and whatever. I'm sure they can just search for Tech Magazine, because I tag Tech Magazine on it. No, I've tried all anyway, this. We're hard anyway, to find. Anyway, I'm joined, as always, by Gavin Dudley, who you've heard from already. <laughs> mouthing off. <laughs> mouthing <laughs> off. Hot and studly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to get over that thing. Ah, I'm digre- I digress. My apologies. Um, yeah, editor of Tech Magazine, large consumer technology magazine on South African shelves. Uh, Gavin, how are you doing on this great Tuesday morning, the third of December? I'm hanging in. This is my third cup of coffee. I pulled an all-nighter last night. Because you in. were watching the news unfold of the competition commissions. Oh yes, it findings. did excite me, Lindsay. It did. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it was exciting. Yeah, so basic rundown, Competition Commission is now saying, trying to get Vodacom and MDN to specifically slash the prices of their 500 megabyte data packages, the 30-day data packages, because of price discrimination, like the value for money is completely out of whack with the things if you buy further up. Mm. The, the yeah, yeah. Well, and they were saying this forever, but these guys are being quite forceful about yeah. it. Mm. Yeah, or within three months they need to slash it or face prosecution. Mm. And then the other thing is um, they're pushing for free data allocation to all, is it all citizens or all customers? No, I think it's every, oh, that's the point. <laughs> How, you can't really roll it out to citizens who are not customers. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. really make sense. So, and it will apply, like, will it apply to all networks? Will it apply to Cell C subscribers? Because that'll bury Cell yeah, C I think for so. sure. All networks have to have okay. a specific so a allocation. minimum allocation of data to every subscriber, yes. which is almost every citizen, yes. effectively. Um, we were debating how much free data a person needs to participate in the country and the economy. And I started off at 100. And then I realized 100 is what yeah. dribbles away in the background I, in, in the weather I, being updated. My and, finger you just know. hovers over the Instagram app. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and it's 100. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's really, you think a thought and it, you know, it turns into 100 meg. Yeah, I was um, just about to tweet that interesting so, thing. And yeah. Then megs so then I thought 200 as a minimum for like a I, minimum user who, who just wants to send WhatsApps to their friends and pictures of their children and stuff. 200. But I think if you want to be an active citizen, 250 is the absolute minimum. Yeah, mm. yeah, and I mean that's a good data allocation. Uh, you, it's just about enough to maybe watch one or two YouTube videos at 360p. Yeah, um, but well, not I, enough. Is that, is that your first instinct that the I citizenry that wants to if watch everybody, videos? If everybody is going to get free data tomorrow, <laughs> Netflix <laughs> subscription in this country would jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what is also true is that the commission wants the networks to report back to them on how people have used their free data allocation so they can see how it's working out, whether they need more, whether they're using it up, how many people redeemed it, and so on and so on. So yeah. that'd yeah, be it's, jolly it's interesting all, to see. Noble. Um, I'm, I, we don't know how all this is going to shake out. Vodacom, interestingly, their first return shot, yeah. their, their volley, mm. was that they have re- been reduced, they've reduced their data prices by 50% since 2016. Yes, which is yes, all yes. good and well. Mm. But the value for money, how much are you paying for 500 megs nowadays? I think I have no idea. Like I'm paying 50 rand a gig, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But you only get those those deduct or reduction in pricing as you, as you get you, over 500 yeah. meg, yeah. yeah so, mm. like two gigs on Vodacom now is 150 rand, mm. I imagine. Mm. Um, so, I mean, what we've established. And what we've known for a long time is that Vodacom's being wildly disingenuous. 70%, 80% of the population is in pay-as-you-go. Those are the people who are being fleeced for data. They are paying a massive premium for data. I think the disparity is 50 times as much. So they are paying 50 times as much for data as users like Lindsay and myself are buying gigabytes at a time. Those people who are buying a couple of megs here and a couple of megs there, they are paying 50 times as much as we are paying who are buying by, by the gigabyte. And that disparity is what the Competition Commission's all on about. Yeah. Cool. Gavin, mm. 
tell Tom Selsey, give us no, a no, short rundown. No, but there's more, there's more on the data what, story. What's more on the data so, story? Um, I think the listeners so, got what they needed. So, no, okay, yeah. so, so people, uh, in the first place, none of this is actually going to happen. No one's actually going to get their free <laughs> allocation. You know, the networks are not actually going to fall down on their knees and beg for mercy. What they're going to do is drag us through the courts for at least a year, if not two. So what you want to watch out for is the commission tribunal. The tribunal is like the enforcement arm yeah. of the commission. They like do the sentencing kind yes. of thing. So the commission says, we'd like this. And then the tribunal says, make it so. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So we'll see when the tribunal chips in in the first place. And I don't think the networks can actually take this line down. The counter argument from the networks is we are spending tens of billions of rands building out the network to provide better service to everybody. This is true. Um, the, and, you know, they have been stymied in this by costs and not allocating yeah. uh, uh, But ICASA is actually on their side in terms of the pricing. Though. Well, okay, it's, it's all. My they point brought is, it into line with a lot of ICASA's The point is that what we must expect is we have another African digital divide thing going on and, in fact, another economic divide. What's yeah. going on is that in order to have a world-class, first-class mobile network like we have, yeah. um, uh, a whole lot of people had to kind of subsidize... Uh, the rolling out of that network to a whole lot of people who who barely use it and yes. people like ourselves who are heavy users are benefiting the most probably yeah. so um, that's capitalism we, are <laughs> we prepared for the networks to sabotage the improvements to the network in order to be able to afford to give everybody free data in other words are we prepared for our service to be degraded so that the masses can receive Free data. I all mean, that's I it's almost like a tax on the rich. To that you know? point, all yeah. I want then is for Woan uh, to be rolled out. Yeah. And so, there be a, uh, what's it, free access or what is it? Equal uh, access. Yeah, that's tier. right. Universal equal access, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I want to be able to buy into a premium tier where I get access to. Like, where well, you can be special. Yeah, yes, okay. <laughs> it's like the private health care. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Private healthcare. I'm sorry, I want my, medical my, aid. My, my privilege is showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't okay. actually afford so to do such things is, right now. My point is, there is a counter argument that the networks have invested tens of billions of rand over years, and are almost well, they pride almost to a point of arrogant about how good their network really is in African terms. Yeah. So there's yeah, probably there a tipping a point. Um, there's a tipping the point where we don't have to have 5G. Can't you please just give us decent 4G? Yeah. And 5G will come when it comes. You yeah. know, don't roll out 5G because that's what suits you. Yes. You know, let's let's get 4G to the whole nation and then figure it out. You like know? Rain and say we were first and then only offer ah, maximum rain. 700 megabits yeah. per second 5G, okay. which is barely faster than. Yeah, LTE. Rain. Rain was <laughs> in it for the PR mileage. Thought they'd launch the 5G network. I and told it turned you, man, out to be rubbish. This 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 forking of the technology that is the problem. So there's a lot of stuff that's just they kind of just retrofitting LTE networks um, with these special componentry that then delivers 5G relative speeds. Yeah, yeah, relative speeds. But it's called 5G in R, 5G new radio. Uh-huh. And that technology is like the it's the it's, it's, it bridging the divide between yeah between LTE and 5G. Is, and I think it's it's just going to slow down. I think it was, it was a PR stunt. That's all it is. Yeah, they don't have a, a 5G stunt. network. Yeah. Sorry, but you were, you were on about something else before I cut you yeah. all the way back. Uh, the so cell, Telcom. Telcom was, was buying Celsi, and Celsi has now told him to go stuff themselves. Mm. <laughs> what, what's no. going on there, Gavin? Just now, a quick I mean, I haven't followed in detail, seconds. but um, Celsi has changed hands from one owner to another owner, and they have just never really been in the pink. Um They've grown the subscriber base. They've done all sorts of things. They've had great promotions. They've got great brand awareness. They've sponsored rugby teams. They've done all these things, but they have not made any money for their stakeholders, their stockholders. And um, it's changed hands several times. The most recently, uh, most recent being Blue Label Telecoms, who are a massive company, but they've all, air quotes, seen their ass. Okay, <laughs> and. Um, One of the reasons for this is that they can't get to the sort of relative scale of MTN and Vodacom. And because they can't operate at scale, they can't get cost benefits and all these things that derive from operating at a massive scale. And um, one of the ways they could get to a sort of partial scale would be for Telecom and Celsi to join forces. Telecom hides so much of its costs within its, you know, network footprint, which, thank you very much, which uh, Celsi can't do. You know, Telecom has a massive network, so it can afford to pretend to be, you know, viable as a mobile operator. Cell C can't do that. So they would really both benefit enormously from this amalgamation. 
but I think they're bickering about price. The people who've invested lots of money in Celsi want to get their money back, obviously. But they better not shoot the whole deal in the foot or else they won't see a cent. They bickering about money. Telcom knows it needs to amalgamate with Celsi to have a better platform to operate from. Okay, that's my whole story. That's very interesting. Um, mm. Gavin, mm. Tesla not coming to the country because the import tax duties on electric cars are still ridiculously mm-hmm. high. Mm-hmm. But there is a Tesla product that has been available, then went out of stock, and then there were supplier issues. Yeah. Um, the Tesla Powerball, which is effectively the repurposed battery packs from the cars. Yeah, you know, you know the, the base of the car, as I yeah. understand, it where the foot wells where you put your yes. feet down is basically all battery you're basically sitting on top of the battery yeah, the so when you replace your batteries the old batteries then get repurposed yeah. into these power walls that can be installed into your home which is a battery backup for your yeah house. so it's like it's like a, a very thick dining not dining room let's, let's say a tabletop a yeah. very thick tabletop it's but a the, rectangle. The, the money is is a little bit ludicrous it's something like a hundred about it a hundred k for the unit Right, this is for the battery block. Yeah. So, sorry, so what a power wall is, it's a massive battery that hangs on your wall outside your house. It allows looks pretty, you to, but it's, it's actually Tesla very spelt. Yeah, 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 and it's a really not a big, ugly thing at all. Um, it, and the second generation that they're installing now mm. um, has its own built in inverter. Inverter, yeah, yeah, so you can run AC and DC, yeah. 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 Um, but so, so the idea is you can be off grid because if you've got solar panels, they will charge your power wall. Your power wall will do big things in your house, like run your stove and run your fridge and your TV and everything else, your lights. Um, and it can run for like a day or two. I can't remember how long. Yeah. Um, but the idea is you could take your house fully off grid with a Tesla power wall. Now they haven't been available and now they're back. And here is the pricing breakdown 120,000 Rand for the power wall itself. Then you know you need someone to rewire bits of your house so it uses the power wall and that will cost you about twenty thousand rand. Um, and uh, further installation costs might cost from ten to fifteen thousand rand. This is according to Rubicon. Rubicon is the company who is bringing them in and is supplying and fitting these. There yeah. are other uh, suppliers and fitters as well, but Rubicon is the main company who's pioneering. So the here's thing. my <coughs> problem. When I saw this this release, I was like. 120,000 Rand for a very big battery can buy me a full solar system that can power my house directly, plus the deep cycle batteries. Um, effectively, old it's gonna car look batteries. ugly though. Uh, yes, it's gonna look ugly, yeah, but it will be a completely off grid system that will power me for about 10 years. <laughs> so, what we're saying is that Tesla's. Tesla's 120,000 Rand is not buying you the solar panels, yeah. it's only buying you the battery. So I can buy a and you feel like you could buy batteries system. and panels for that. Yeah, that can mm. take my entire household off, off, off grid and the batteries will last me about 10 years, hmm. uh, barring any freak accidents. I have my doubts. <laughs> I, I don't think 120,000 Rand for free power is such a big thing. Well, the, the, I mean, this is just for the battery. Yeah, but the battery is the important part. The, the yes. energy itself is free. So the usage thereof is the trick. No, yeah. but you still have to with the power wall. You still have to install your other bits and pieces. The panels. So I'm mean. saying, yeah. without the spelt little Tesla <laughs> branded thing on you the think, wall, you think there's a home baked solution that will be much cheaper? Yeah, a couple of a couple of deep cycle batteries stashed in those black tough boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be ugly <laughs> compared to a power wall. Man. With a full now, solar system or I, wind I put it to you system. that there's actually more technology to the battery than just the battery. I think there are sort of things that are regulating the current, there are things that are managing the current, there are probably safety measures. And you being can put buy all of those things and add if it you to know the if you know what you're doing, but yeah. of course you're not allowed to do that. You it has to be done by a qualified professional. But when it comes so to, you can buy all the stuff and then you've got to pay some other people power, to hold it. The most important thing happening in alternative power generation right now is the 20 megawatt um, wind, uh, windmills that are now being tested in Europe for offshore use. 20 megawatts per unit, per windmill, Kevin. Mm. So is, what country did you say? Uh, it's being tested in Europe um, oh. in various sites. I think. I know Germany's huge on wind Yeah, I think the Germany's Netherlands and Germany are first in line yeah. for mm. this, but like to have reached the point where we can get 20 megawatts from one you know, single windmill running at optimum conditions obviously um, you won't be generating anything over mm. 80 kilometers per hour winds or below 30 kilometers per hour winds sorry so so when you say 20 megawatt that is what per day or 
I don't understand how this current thing works. So that's the while, pressure. If that thing is running at its optimum speed, it is uh, generating 20 megawatts, megawatts of current. Right. Of current. Okay. All right. And okay. you, you hook up like maybe 10 of those mm -hmm. and you You've running... A whole town. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Just, just on wind power. And then you have like your, your, your Tesla power wall where all that energy gets transferred into yes, and you yes. get stored for when the wind doesn't blow I mean, on a day. Okay, here's a reference point. If, if like me, you get very confused between megawatts and kilowatts and amperage and all sorts of things, um, the Tesla power wall produces 13.5 kilowatt hours yeah. of energy um, at a continuous 5 watts. So 5 watts is what a typical household might be using at a peak. Yeah. This wind thing is producing 20 megawatts. Yeah. So that is many many hundreds of times yeah. that of a Tesla <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, it's about a thousand times. <laughs> um, sorry I'm munching into my toast. I just got hungry. Cool. Mm. Gavin. Mm. Ah, gaming mm. on Android phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of it. A lot of phones are coming out now with separate like gaming modes and mm. settings mm. that you can place. Like I, I play uh, football management sim, football manager. Uh -huh. uh, 2020 is really good. Um, I, I play Candy Crush. Mm. I play a bit of Stickman Cricket. <laughs> oh, this is quite a few games for someone who doesn't and, do mobile gaming. He's running it? down a whole F1 inventory of manager games. as well. There, there's at least four games for someone who doesn't yeah. really do mobile gaming. Of, it's of just those run down four games. Football manager. Mm. Will murder uh -huh. a battery in mm. record time. Okay. Bizarrely. I don't does understand. Does it show why. gameplay or does it, it just does, player it selections like, and stuff? It has like dots that go, oh, okay, like okay. go okay. top view sort of things. Mm -hmm. But you, graphically, it's not that intensive, but it just does something to the phone. Well, well, yeah, here's a good way. To, it's well known that gaming on the phone is what hammers the battery to death. So, try this. You go into your settings and look for a setting called gaming and within that you can turn on a thing called the game launcher yeah um now what happens so huawei has one samsung has one lg has one yes yeah uh, I'm, I'm it's the kind of thing that you can imagine is going to be built into future versions yes. of android okay so effectively what this does in the game in the case of this lg that i'm using every time you launch a game it produces a little button in the bottom left corner momentarily you know as part of your navigation buttons and that little button looks like a little game controller, like a, it's got a cross and buttons on it. It's very tiny. And if you tap on that, while, when you start up your game, this button appears. If you tap on that button, it gives you a whole lot of options for how to control your gaming on your phone. Mm. Two or three of the, uh, the most useful functions are, it will mute all your incoming media. So your phone won't bleep um, when you receive messages. Your phone won't ring when the phone calls come in. And um, it won't send you notifications. You can also stop it sending little panels over your game often you know messages arrive little panels sms's and so on appear on top of your game you can stop it from doing that um but um the thing i found particularly useful is you can adjust the game graphics per game so i play word games and crosswords and sudoku games that have like no graphical value whatsoever yeah. so instead of running my screen at full refresh while those things are on i can turn the graphic settings down really low and it doesn't affect the game in any way whatsoever but it saves your battery yeah so if you're playing like a simple 8-bit type game maybe you want to turn down your graphic settings for example okay um, an interesting little how to yes yes so other things you can do um you can tell the game i want to take a break now and it puts yeah. the whole game on pause a lot of games don't have a pause function yeah. but if you you press a little button that says take a break uh it will pause for you it will also automatically do that in, in certain settings mm. if you yeah. like pause the game and you go away it goes into like little yes, mode, yes that's right that's right just, you can or wake up the screen if you again. play continuously for more than five minutes if you turn on the take a break yeah. thing after five minutes it dims the screen and tells you wouldn't you like to take a break <laughs> <laughs> so um so one more time how to get to your game mode you go to your settings look for gaming and turn on the game launcher that means every time you launch a game, the game launcher button appears in your bottom left corner, and by tapping on that, you can set controls for that game. Yeah, Gavin, okay. have you used Google Stadia at all? Have you tested? Um, no, no, no. I, it's not even available here. It's not available many places. Only play available in the handful of places, I believe. Really? Mm. Well, Apple Arcade is pretty dope, and it's available oh, okay. here. Okay. No, I was quite interested in a, a South African game that made it into the Apple Arcade, which is quite interesting so tell us about Apple Arcade and then I'll tell you about the game yeah there's a couple of indie games in there which is really great yeah uh, you can connect the iPad or like a iOS device now uh -huh. or your Apple TV to an Xbox controller or PS4 controller it, it's paid for it's like 100 rand or something uh, no? it's uh, it's 30 is it 40 rand a month 
Okay. Like 90 there, but I found, got the feeling it was 100 rand. Okay, yeah, fine. But you have fine. access to all the games that are right. that are. On but all the service. games just means all the games that Apple has certified for the service, yes. which means they're all beautifully finished off, look yes. really sexy, no rough and ready kind of action yeah. there. Apple's got to filter out all the bad yeah, I stuff. I think the game you're talking about is Boot Fighter, eh? Hey? No, no, I think, no, Boot Fighter's not actually in there. This is a cricket game, it's got really <laughs> weird physics, you swing this bat around like an idiot, yeah. and the other guy throws the ball at you like an idiot, and oh, the wow. two things connect, and then they've got all sorts of other weird stuff going on in the game. Yeah. It's a very, very graphically very simple, but actually quite compelling. But how okay. Apple Arcade differs from Stadia mm. is, Stadia is is all server-side gameplay, mm. so you get fed a stream of mm. the game you are playing. Yeah, so you so can it'll work on almost any device because yeah. all the heavy lifting is happening on the server yeah, so side. So your your graphic quality isn't that great because of what, however your 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 hardware, what your hardware can manage. Um, whereas the Apple Arcade thing is you actually playing the game like it's like you downloading the app mm. um, to to your to your device. So you're playing either online or natively. That's right, you can play offline yeah, with the Apple games, offline. yeah. Mm. yeah which, which is great. Yeah, I, I'm just interested in these services because like companies like Nokia and Sony have all made all gaming tr- yeah, they've all phones tried in this. the past yeah, yeah, yeah. with like these slide down keyboards. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and weird and, shapes, yeah. And even the, the LG G8X Thing Q with its dual screen. Oh, it's can, also gaming oriented, yeah. There, yeah. There's mm. a, a mode where you can use the second screen as a gaming, mm-hmm. uh, gaming pad or uh, controller, which is all great. But then I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what, we can actually pair proper hardware peripherals to our phones yes, now, so we don't Bluetooth, need yeah. those sp- sp- like special... Yeah, I mean, Xbox was one of the first controllers that was compatible with PCs and yeah. then with phones. Yeah, okay. Um, interesting. Okay, so, I mean, but app- actually... Uh, uh, Apple gaming service warrants a much more complex discussion. I didn't yeah. even know it was available here, to be honest. Yes, it is. It all okay. went live when, when Apple TV Plus went Oh, that's right, because well. Apple well, through these global rollouts, whereas it's Stadia, Stadia only available in a handful of markets at yeah. the moment, and will be rolling out very slowly as they prove it, you know. Yeah, I don't have a lot of hope for Stadia, though, because it's very internet connection dependent. Yeah, all that's that. the thing. I think they the reason they're not rolling it out everywhere is, first, they're trying to figure out what is the minimum bandwidth yeah. requirement they can get it down to, you know. Yeah. Um, um, can I talk about Shazam just for a just minute? Just quickly. Very quickly. So, I mean, I stumbled on this idea. Someone told me about it. I've been checking in with my friends how they discover new music. Because I don't discover new music. I just keep listening to the same old music I've always listened I to. I read Pitchfork. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't even know what Pitchfork is. Um, and one of them told me, well, I listen to internet radio, which mm. I do too. I just don't listen to music radio. I listen to internet talk radio. But um, then somebody else told me a really weird story. They go to Shazam... And Shazam.com, everyone knows what Shazam is. That's the, the app that allows you to identify tunes. You know, the phone yeah. listens to the tune and tells you what you're listening to. Um, Shazam.com, and they've got a section called Charts. And within Charts, they can show you what are the most Shazam songs. Mm. And uh, they do it by country. So you can go to South Africa, and you can see what most people have try to discover what songs most people have tried to pick up through Shazam, which is, uh, you know, it's like a proxy for what is popular at the time. I see that old um, Maroon 5 is in num- position number two, which strikes me as weird. Then there's yeah. all these complete unknown township sounding, ghetto sounding well, folks dude, collaborating with each on. other, you know, <laughs> names I've never heard of, Lucky Boy outside 9, of, outside of your sphere. and, uh, you know, illegitimate child 6, let's, and let's, whatever these people are, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, what? okay, who are these people, man, obviously big in cultures that I know nothing about, yeah, so not I that do, I listen I to Maroon 5, thing, so, um, so some, just last yeah. thing on... Shazam. So you can go to South Africa, then you can break it down by city. You can go to Cape Town okay. and see what they're listening to there. Yeah. All those liberals. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of them. I, yes, you okay, see, so I was what do you do? To, I was trying to avoid all these awkward moments <laughs> that you have caused now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I've just blasted right so through them, did I? I subscribe to Google Play Music um, and YouTube Music via my YouTube Premium account and then Apple Music as well. So. If I am in the mood for new music or to figure out what the kids are listening to mm-hmm. nowadays, I do go to the charts um, or whatever's new music. Or mm-hmm. I have subscribed to the email newsletters mm-hmm. where like every month they'll send you like updates like, add this to your library. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, We've selected this mm-hmm. for you because you, I don't know. They mm-hmm. always get, my, my take is all online 
service recommendation algorithms are mm-hmm. trash mm-hmm. because they never serve me what I actually mm. want. I've never found one thing of value. Maybe you're life. a walking enigma, Lindsay. I, I am actually. You um, defeated the world's which best AI. Me too. It's Christmas season. Mm. So this morning, my wife unleashed the Mariah Carey on me. All I want for <laughs> Christmas. The epitome of Christmas music. Then That's been, from that movie, right? Uh, mm. No, it's no. from her seminal album, which is now 18 years old, I believe. Or 25, 25 years old. Is that like all I want for Christmas yes. is you? Yes. Okay, that was a yes. thing tuned to a movie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, there's a Love Actor. I'll, I'll link. Mm-hmm. There's a Vox video um, on YouTube. I'll link mm. it down in the, in the show <coughs> notes. Where they just they break down why it is the it's like the Christmas the cake of Christmas okay. music. <laughs> it starts in the Christmas key. It has all the jingles. <laughs> but anyway, I like this. <laughs> but John Legend put out a Christmas album last yeah, year. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Or at Thank least you very in much. 2018, uh, which was pretty good. Um, he's taken a lot of standards. But he this year did a re-release and he updated. The baby, it's cold outside with Kelly Clarkson. Is this his version of a of a Christmas song? Uh, yeah, of, okay. Of, like his Christmas album. So he's re-released his Christmas album, Spotify exclusive, um, and there's now a new woke version of <laughs> Baby, it's cold outside. Because you know, like it's it's a questionable Christmas song. Man. So I wanted to listen to this. I uh-huh. wanted to hear the new wokeness, and I could not find this on any of my streaming services because it isn't Spotify exclusive. Mm. And I found that very irritating because once again we do not own the content. Yes. We but only buy license to whatever the yeah. services. Okay. Have so you have the whim of people who yeah. chop and, and change their deals, yeah. Usually I think I'm quite well covered because I have three different streaming services. You would think, yeah. Um, but alas I do not have the one that, one, <laughs> Where that the song is. Uh. Yeah. And I'm not gonna take out a Spotify subscription anytime soon. Okay. <laughs> so your point is again, you know, we we have a license to listen to music, not to yeah. own it or control it. Yeah. Okay. And that extends to, to everything. So mm. um, we have an interesting situation in my family where um, family members are now facing, they need to upgrade the tech mm. uh, because the Android tablet that they have is not is no longer compatible with apps because the, it's been forgotten by the Android gods, the, the wheels of technology <laughs> churn 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 <laughs> every year you must either adapt or die mm. and yeah it just got me thinking like we should be investing in more tech that will have more longevity mm. so on that side you can say what you want but the value per- perception of apple devices with a premium price attached to them is i think a bit skewed because those devices last a long time mm, yeah i i would have to give it to you on that but again you've introduced an entirely <laughs> complex issue <laughs> Right at the end, just when there's no time for a rebuttal. Well done. You learn from President Trump and, and others Gavin, how to do it. On mm. a last <clears throat> note, as we were discussing that, super phones, 2019, mm. great deal for the smartphone. Mm. Um, what's your top pick? Well, you know, I mean, you know, my, my specialty is sort of budget phones and things like that. But actually, in a personal capacity, longevity, the thing I've got the greatest value out of the phone, I've got the greatest value out of over time, has been the Samsung Note 9. Mm. That's last year's Note. It had great, solid, stable tech, and it's tech that is still hot today. In other words, yeah. the stuff it does is still up there with what's possible and on today's Samsung, phones. Samsung's mm. been really good with their software updates, mm-hmm. and yeah. especially like things like their yeah. cameras mm. have improved over time. Mm. Which, which yeah. is really but good. All in software, so even though the camera hardware is the same as the phone you had last year, the camera performs remarkably better just because of software. Yeah, mm. and you can pick up Note 9s for about 10 grand now. Yeah. Um, on, on so places. if you want a high performing phone and don't want to pay top yeah. dollar, um, I was liking the LG V40, except that now that's over a year yeah. old, as is the Note 9. But the Note 9 to me, really well built product. Okay. So my, my pick is the LG G8 S ThinQ because it has current 2019 specs, mm-hmm. uh, Snapdragon 855, 60 gigs of RAM, brilliant camera system, same similar camera system to what the V40 had, and it has secure face unlock, and it is now selling for 9,000 RAM mm. on take a lot. Since mm. the G8X ThinQ was introduced, that's now at 13,000 RAM, so the price in the LG G8S ThinQ has dropped to 9,000 RAM. That's just a great all-round phone. Um, I'm use, we are both using it today uh-huh. because my S10 is in a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cover that next week. <laughs> while just while, in case while we I wait for the Android 10 update. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to miss a single week of talking about the S10, <laughs> even if we're talking about the demise of the S10. 
Um, um, yeah, but that's that's my story for this week, Kevin. I mean, we haven't we haven't spoken about Black Friday and Cyber Monday at all, and that's probably about fitting. I would like to tell my Black Friday joke, man. What's tell your my Black, Black Friday, Friday joke? joke? Come on, it's come a very what what you would call in colored vernacular a flow joke. Wow, it's like <laughs> weak, <laughs> weak as in flow. You are on form today. <laughs> what, my my racial slurs in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well my flow joke goes as follows: Black Friday. Stay home, save 100%. Ah, I, I like that. Um, I am Lindsay Shooters. If you disagree with anything I've said, come fight me on Twitter or on social media. I am Sharpshooters, S H A R P S C H U T T E R S. I'm that opinion guy on the internet. That opinion guy on .co.za is the website. I have sinus issues, that's why I'm sounding very nasal right now. You do, actually. You do. Yeah, okay. And that opinion guy on YouTube, Gavin. Where um, can they email us? What's going on? Yes. So we, we're aware that overclocked has got an awkward spelling. But if you want to email us, simply email overclockedza, all one thing, at gmail.com. Tell us we're doing well. We really need encouragement to take the whole game to the next level. Overclocked. ZA.com. Oh, gmail.com. <laughs> Oops. Um, We'd really love to hear from you. Um, and you can follow what I'm doing in Tech Magazine at Tech Magazine Kozar. Our website needs some help right now. I'm waiting to extend a hand of help to that website. But do visit anyway. And, uh, and give you can win feedback. a Google Home. You can win a Google Home. Well, well Google. not just yet. We're putting up a quiz this week. Take our quiz and you can win a Google Home. Nice. That's a great quiz. You can win a Google Home. Oh, I, I will. I will <laughs> try. <laughs> I'll send someone who doesn't share my surname. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> that way I have plausible deniability. <laughs> okay. Cool. That's it for this week. Over and out.